Anime fighting games must come out the gates strong for their survival. When Grand Blue Fantasy Versus was released in 2020, it came in with mediocre fanfare. As promising as Grand Blue was going to be, a lot needed to be improved on. Some things like the RPG elements in its story mode made it strenuous to complete. The small 11 person initial roster was weak, and most importantly, the terrible netcode to fight others online made the new fighting game from Arc System Works an uphill battle to keep a healthy fan base. Some things improved in time, like the DLC characters increasing the roster, however, there remained several other underlying issues. Fortunately, Arc System Works and Psy Games did not give up and created a new edition that significantly improved from the original. Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising was the answer to the issues the original introduced. With several upgrades, fixes, adjustments, and more to the core game, Rising puts itself out there to give new breadth and potential to the Grand Blue universe. How good is its predecessor? Here is my review. <laughs> A lot has changed for the better for Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising. Thanks to the DLC packs from the original, Rising has a healthy 24 man roster and features 4 brand new characters, increasing the roster count to 28. The new characters, Nier, Anila, Siegfried, and Grimnir, join the Grand Blue cast and adds new mechanics in their unique ways. Take Nier for example. She is a very technical character since she is a puppet caster. Her puppet does most of her fighting for her. However, where the puppet is placed and where Nier is on screen is vital. The Lancer Dragoon Grimnir is a master of the sky. He produces projectiles, allowing him to change trajectories in the air swiftly and do some incredible setups. Siegfried has incredible power behind his attacks. He can easily overwhelm an opponent with his powerful strikes and charging attacks. My personal favorite is Anila. She uses a mix of a long halberd and her adorable fluffy sheeps to get in your opponent's face. These new characters mixed with the existing cast give players several options on their best personal playstyle. The mechanics in Grand Blue Fantasy vs Rising has changed significantly. It mixes the old style with new features, making Rising fun to play. I will not review everything that has changed, but I will discuss the most significant changes that makes Versus better than the original version. First, let's talk cooldown periods of your special moves. Initially, if you performed a special move using the easy one button input system, you were penalized by having a longer attack cooldown. Rising ultimately removes the penalty and now all players are on equal playing fields when doing special attacks. Rising also introduces two new mechanics, ultimate skills and bravery points. Ultimate skills allow the player to perform a stronger than normal special attack that can do unique attributes. Take Anila for example, her sheep charge ability allows her to dash in rather quickly. Using an ultimate skill ability, it takes 50% off your meter and it boosts her special attack by going faster and farther, increasing the damage and potentially causing a wall bounce to, to extend the, the combos. Most of the ultimate skills are instantaneous, so it's a pleasant surprise of burst damage. The second addition, Brave Points, adds more technicality to a Grand Blue Fantasy vs Rising battle. Players will use their Brave Points for one of two things. If you spend a Brave Point on a Raging Strike, you can break the opponent's block and or extend a combo from a non-combo enabled attack. The Raging Strike is a strong move that stuns the opponent and opens them up for great damage. The other option is to spend your Brave Point on Brave Counters. This allows you to push the opponent back and make space if they aggressively go on the offense. However, you have to be very cautious about spending your Brave Points. You only get 3 Brave Points per round. Spending all your points in a round significantly reduces your defense of your character. If squandered, you can lose the entire pelt the bar in one combo. It sounds complicated and possibly broken on paper, but the new mechanics make the matches faster paced, tactical, and super fun. Grand Blue Fantasy vs Rising also revamped the story mode. Gone is the overly complicated RPG elements and weapon leveling up system. In its place is a straightforward story with many cutscenes, special matches, quick tutorials for character allies, and an extended story that brings the new characters into the rising world. During story mode, you earn additional abilities that may help you during the fight. Abilities such as heal, increase damage, and revive are great, but the story mode itself was not super challenging. It took about 2 hours to complete everything in the mode, and personally, it was alright. Some interactions made it interesting, but as a whole, the cutscenes overly extended the story mode itself. It got to a point where I was skipping the many dialogue points I encountered. 
Some of the fights stipulations made me enjoy going through the entire story, but I would, and I definitely would recommend going through the story to familiarize yourself with the entire roster. The most significant improvement in Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising is the online mode. Nowadays, there's absolutely no reason for any fighting game to not have rollback netcode. Rising upgraded to rollback and mixed with the new mechanics, it is entertaining and addicting to play all types of people online. Rising also added crossplay between PlayStation and PC owners to, and it runs very smoothly. Players either go to the online lobby with their avatar and wait for a match or bypass the lobby entirely and wait for matches in either your trading modes or in the main screen. Either way, the online is very stable. I played several players in Japan and had incredible stability. Sometimes the rollback frames was at two to three, which is insane. Rising also added challenges that gives additional in-game currency to purchase character color sets, stages, avatars, weapon skins, and more. Besides getting into online matches, there is also a mode called Grand Brews, where you use your online avatar to win a series of party games. It plays like Fall Guys, but an even simpler version. I experienced this mode only once due to the long session time it took to get into a game. When finally in the game, it was a little underwhelming. It does have some potential, but clearly it is not the focus of what Rising is making. Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising is a fantastic game for beginners and surprisingly technical one for ver veterans in the fighting game community. Arc System Works puts in a lot of tender love and care into this new IP for a game to improve this much in a three year time span. Improvements in even frame information, tutorials on character spacing, and even combo training can turn a beginner player in this beautiful looking game into a fighting game connoisseur. I have clocked almost 40 hours playing Rising, uh, making me play this almost 10 times more than the original. I have had nothing but a great time playing it. Usually anime fighters uh, do not hold my interest for long, but they now have my undivided attention in Rising's case. I highly recommend playing this game, and you should see if, you, if the world of a sky pirate is the world for you. For more video game reviews like this, like and subscribe on our YouTube, the CFG, or go to our main website, confreaksgeeks.com.